of people are understandably just baffled as to why electric car chargers, why electric cars in general have no problems whatsoever handling winter in places where it gets as cold or even colder than Chicago or northern parts of the United States. Why is it that places like Sweden, Denmark, Norway, where you have incredibly, incredibly cold winters, why do they never have problems with their EVs? Now, there's actually five really good reasons why EVs will work fine in winter in Europe, and they will work fine in winter in North America. That includes Canada. And the reasons are pretty obvious. Here's what they are. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get straight to it. Reason number one, most people in Norway charge at home. 90% of EV owners in Norway just charge at home regularly. They don't need to charge elsewhere. Uh, when they do a road trip, they do something called preheating their battery. So if you preheat your battery uh, with a Tesla vehicle, it's very easy to do this. It's a, like an automated process. It means the battery is ready to be charged. It warms the battery up to a warmer temperature. So even if it's a blizzard outside, it doesn't matter. And you can charge really quickly. That's another reason. Uh, in addition to that, there's more fast chargers available in Norway. There's a car network here where, you know, 85% of EVs being sold or 85% of vehicles being sold are fully electric. So there's a much bigger number, much larger number of fast chargers. And people are used to, they're used to this concept of knowing I need to preheat the battery before I charge it. And that's gonna solve some of the charging issues. Well, in fact, it solves basically all of them. So we've got three big reasons here. The charging infrastructure in Norway is really, really good. There's plenty of charges, there's enough. Uh, and two, people have about 90% of EV owners in Norway, uh, they live in houses, so they charge their cars at home 99% of the time. Three, they're used to preheating their battery. So if they're in a blizzard, it's really cold. They, they know that they preheat their battery and they can charge quickly. Most people have a Tesla, which obviously automatically is able to do this for them. So they don't have to worry about this issue. So here's the fourth reason, trip distance. In places like Norway, Sweden, people generally don't drive a long way and they don't do it all on the same day. You know, people don't go, well, hey, today's a, a long weekend. We're gonna just go on a little road trip. Everyone goes at the same time in Australia. As in America, it's a very common thing. What we do is there's a public holiday um, or there's a holiday day off and people go for that weekend. Everyone goes on a road trip. They clog up the roads. Really frustrating for me. I used to surf every weekend. You know, I still try to get out and surf, but I'd surf every weekend. And then you'd have all of a sudden thinking to yourself, I'm trying to get home. It'd take me an hour and a half normally to drive home. And it took, would take me three hours on these long weekends. And then you know what would happen on those long weekends? Gas stations would be packed full of cars, just totally packed full of cars. There'd be this huge queue of people trying to fill up with gasoline because they'd all decided that they needed to go to this, the petrol station, the gas station on the same exact day. So the same problem occurs. This is what happened in Chicago. People all went out at the same time during this blizzard. So getting back to America. In America, apparently only 51% of current EV owners um, say they have installed a charger at home. A lot of people probably are using superchargers to charge. So that means that superchargers can potentially actually get blocked up. Too many people come at once. Um, you have a public holiday, too many people come at once, and all of a sudden it leads to congestion. 42% of owners typically charge their cars at home. So there's a lot more fast charging going on in America and a lot less people charging at home. I'm not sure why that is, but apparently that's the case according to a study from Global Mobility, S&P Global Mobility. Now, getting back to the distance, average trip lengths are further in the United States. So more people are doing road trips, more people are driving longer distances in the US. You guys have 52 states. Um, you don't have, like Australia is a massive country, but the majority of our country is desert. So we don't generally drive the enormous distances that a lot of people in America drive. That causes another issue as well. So with a bit of pre-thought, you can actually charge your EV in any, pretty much any temperature. Now, will charging performance be affected? Yeah, batteries can charge more slowly um, in this situation, but the truth is batteries in an EV are not like batteries, they're not like batteries in a mobile phone. You go, you go say go for a hike into a, a minus Fahrenheit, minus Celsius 
temperature, place, and your phone just shuts down. That's what's happened to me many times with my iPhone. It shuts down. I've got to put it under my shirt, use my body heat to warm it up before I can turn it on again. Battery performance is really effective. But with EVs, you can preheat the battery. So you don't need to try and put the battery, you know, try and put your body next to the battery to warm it up. The car will do that itself. If you're prepared and you make sure that happens, you can charge your battery. And that's the reason why plenty of people in Canada, plenty of people in northern parts of North America, even people in Alaska, they have EVs and they get along with it all right because they're used to this situation. They're used to dealing with that situation. So that's pretty much the reasons why um, that recent blizzard affected um, Tesla's EVs, affected many different EVs. Everything kind of happened all at once. And as we know, uh, the media loves these kind of stories. EVs are breaking down, EVs are terrible, rah, rah, rah. And so they built it into something bigger than what it was. Just because that happened once or a couple of times doesn't mean that it's generally what happens to people who buy an electric car. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.